the world needs more big sis energy. Oh. It's a real thing. Like a lot of people don't have sisters. Yeah. It's so sad. It is sad. I don't know what I would do without my sister. No, Both my sisters. And that's why I wanted to start the podcast too. We were like, if someone else doesn't have a big sister, like we want to be that to them. You're listening to Big Sis Energy. Woo! <laughs> Welcome back to Big Sis Energy. I'm your host, Mackenzie. And I'm your other host, Malia. And today we have a very special guest. She hosts three different TV shows, one of them being MTV catfish yes. and she has a <laughs> podcast called relationship which i personally tune into every single friday so cammy crawford thank you so much for thank coming on for big sis. thank you for having me i feel like the biggest sis like i feel like we could be sisters I know. oh hey but i would be the 30 year old sister in this. yes <laughs> how many of you are there there's four of us so we have a younger sister she's 15 and she looks exactly like us and then we have a younger brother he's 17 yes uh, at least there's a boy in there you have any siblings i have five sisters i'm the oh oldest my. oh girls. my gosh yeah. the oldest. okay so we're yeah. both we're both the oldest. Yes. Okay. So she has big sis so energy. I do. You went through the the strict parenting then, right? Yes. My mom. <laughs> my mom likes to call me the test baby. She says that I got to do everything that my siblings will never get to do, but I also feel like I was I was groomed as a child into being like the perfect big sister. I feel like my mom just she she knew what I was capable of. Oh, okay. that's so cute. <laughs> that's so cool. I appreciate oh, I love that. that. <laughs> but it is a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. It is. For us, our parents were like super, super strict. Yeah. And now they're like a little more lenient on our younger siblings. I'm like, y'all don't have the same like, parents. You guys have it they easy. Don't. All right. Well, let's get into it. I know you were crowned as Miss Teen USA. I was. In 2010. How was that transitioning from like the pageant world and then going into like hosting TV shows like what what kind of steps did you take to get there I mean I never watched a pageant before I competed in pageantry wow it was just not my thing I one of my best friends in high school had competed and one day at school she was like you should do this pageant I think it would be fun for you you'd meet a lot of cool people and I was like okay so I signed up and I remember asking my mom about it and she was like why like why are we doing this (laughs) and I was like well Jessica said it would be fun. And like my mom's like, okay, this is not like these are expensive. Like these things are not cheap. cheap right. right. And it's a lot of work. And girls work their whole entire lives for these kinds of moments. My top five at Miss Maryland Teen USA. So you have to do state and then you go to national. Okay. Okay. So gotcha. I won Miss Maryland Teen USA and then I went on to Miss Teen USA. But Dang. at Maryland, I competed with, I think there were 63 girls in the whole pageant. Wow. And in my top five, all of the girls had been competing for at least five years. Oh my god! Like, I was. And this was new, your first uh, yes. one. Oh my god! So imagine their delight when I came in. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> when gosh. I came in, and I was like, "Oh, this is for me." Um, but I, I feel like because I wasn't really, I didn't grow up in the pageant system, it allowed for me to have a different kind of, I don't want to say advantage, but like a freshness that. Okay. You know, yeah. the judges were looking for that year. Mm-hmm. Every year is different. Um, and with that experience, I ended up gaining experience in front of the camera. And that was the first time that I even thought about being on TV. It was like okay. a lot of firsts. Oh, wow. So oh, cool. first pageant, first experience in front of a camera. I never saw myself doing anything like that, mainly because like, I guess now it's a little bit different, but back in the day, I'm thinking like TV hosts are like journalists. Like right. they are right. studying the new, like they are on the news. Yeah. I didn't want to be on the news, <laughs> but <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> that's not me. But I, I never saw myself in that way. Like right. I saw like Tyra Banks, she was hosting a show, but right. she is a supermodel. Like Wendy Williams is a radio icon. Right. And so it's, it's just a little bit different. I never thought that that was something I could do. At the time, I wanted to be a dermatologist, actually. Oh, Oh, wow. So I was on a totally different path. Wow. Yeah. So I would say that pageantry and that experience and just being in front of a camera is what led me to being a TV host today because I saw myself being able to do it. So you kind of went from being interviewed Mm -hmm. to being the interviewer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how is that now? Now it's a little bit different. I'm not doing like red carpet hosting anymore or um, at at the time when I was grinding, when I was on my grind, I was at every single event, like on the step and repeat, asking people questions, talking to celebrities. And now because of the kind of hosting that I do, I've kind of become the celebrity that's right, being right. interviewed in that kind of right. way. So it was definitely a, like a switch in my mind. And 
now I feel very thankful because honestly, those red carpet interviews are not the vibe. <laughs> I was gonna say, they're kind of scary. It's I feel like scary. I've seen them and they're like off the bat, they ask you something super personal. You're like, where did this come from? Yeah, it's scary because <laughs> you, you only have but so much time. There's so many other people on the carpet trying to get an interview, trying to get the person's attention. Right. right. You want to hold their attention for long enough to be able to ask the things that you want to ask and get personal without their PR person coming over and like dragging them away. <laughs> it's just a lot going on. Oh and it's just gosh. not for me. Because I'm, like, I'm not trying to beg anybody to be my friend or to have a conversation. Well, look yeah. at you now, though. I mean, yeah. you, I know. How do you? How are you here today? How do you have time question. for this? <laughs> I know. Like, actually, genuinely, genuinely. I'm, I make time for what I feel is important, and you guys are killing it. And I was like, they're so Thank beautiful. You. you have such great Thank energy. You. And the name of the podcast alone, I was like, I have to. Of course, I have to. Oh. Be <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I and you're our first guest. Yeah. Girl. Yes, I, love it. I, feel, oh I feel so honored, truly. Oh my God. We feel we're honored. honored, honored having you here. No, I'm so excited for today. So, how old were you when you won Miss Teen USA? I was 16 when I won Miss Maryland Teen USA. Then I turned 17 in time for Miss Teen USA. Oh my gosh. And by the time I gave up my title, I was 18. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you went from a teenager mm -hmm. to a young woman mm -hmm. to a grown woman mm -hmm. all in front of like the public eye. <laughs> yeah. How was that transition being like viewed from so many different people? I mean, it depends on who you ask, because if you are looking from like the pageant sphere perspective, they're very harsh. Like pageant people are no jokes. Honestly, a little bit sick. Like really? I always say it's like the most beautiful industry with the world's ugliest people. Like they wow. have some really nasty people who are f just the fans. Like I'm not even talking about the contestants. I'm talking about the fans of pageants. Like the commenters? Yes. The people okay. who watch, the people who, you know, they have all these like blogs. Like we know about the blogs now and like Reddit forums, but they have their own forum to talk shit about pageant girls Dang. oh my no matter how old you are so at miss teen usa oh. at the time the age ranges were 14 to 19 that's heartbreaking so imagine being a 14 year old and you see like all this stuff on the internet about you your body um your parents like oh she just won because her parents have a lot of money or she just won because she had a sob story about her mom dying like they oh will gosh. they will attack they will attack so i would say by the time I was 18 years old, I had heard every negative thing about me that you could possibly hear. I've had death threats. I've had oh. my face on KKK websites. <gasps> I've had so many different so shows. many different things. <laughs> At the time, when I won Miss Teen USA, I was the first black Miss Teen USA in 10 years. Hmm. So wow. like they weren't used to it wasn't normal okay. seeing girls of color right. winning. Right. It, it wasn't normal. There would only actually be two black girls in the pageant every year in Miss Ann and Teen. Oh wow, out of the God. 63 girls out of, that were there? Well, out of 51. 51, okay, Yeah, out of wow. 51. More more girls compete at state, but right. it's like a known thing. I think there are still some states that have never crowned a black girl. In the how many years of this like pageant's history? Right. 2023, y'all. 2023, exactly. Dang. <laughs> it, it, is, it is really, it's devastating. And when you are one of the two girls out of the 51 states, so it was myself in South Carolina that year, you go into it knowing only one of you is going to make it. Right. So mm -hmm. to the next round, yeah. they'll they'll bump one girl into the top 15. Okay. But if you make the top 10 or if you make the top five after that, you're lucky. If you win, you're really lucky. So at, at the time, now it's, uh, honestly, I don't even keep up with it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, that was a different <laughs> like, time in my life. <laughs> yeah, that was a totally different time in my life. And I made it through and oh I'm my like, gosh. oh, but um it creates a certain level of competitiveness between you and that other person. Gotcha. Right. Luckily, my year, Megan, she was South Carolina. We're still girls to this day. Like we, Aww. we like, we were like, okay, it's me and you, girl. Like one of us, <laughs> we is got gonna, this. One of That's us so has got cute. it. So I will say, like that experience was very harsh and very hard on me, but I think it helped me develop the resilience that I have now as an adult being in the industry and right. you always get negative comments. Right. Like I could post something on my Instagram today and it could be the most positive post. It could literally be sunshine and rainbows and everything <laughs> gorgeous and world peace. Yep. And somebody will be in the comments saying something negative. So I feel like it kind of, it taught me a lot about the public and yeah. like even when people can love you one day they can hate you the next so like you also have funny. to be so content and so like 
confident with yourself right. that you don't let that kind of stuff waver how you feel about yourself from right. day to day. And not living for other people's approval. Exactly. And that's something I feel like every girl goes through at one point or yeah. another. And still day to day. I mean, I feel like yeah. I still struggle with that is like having that confidence. Mm -hmm. And I remember yeah. when I was younger, I would straighten my hair because mm -hmm. no one else mm -hmm. had curly hair around me. And I was like, oh, I want to look like everybody. Let me yeah. just straighten this, you know? Right. So it's like, I think everyone has some type of some type of relatability to that. Honestly, I, I relate to that too. Cause when I was in all of elementary school, I got bullied. Middle school, I also got bullied, but middle school was the boys more than it was the girls. Okay. okay. In elementary school, it was the girls. So mm -hmm. I had these three bullies. Mm. You know mm. who you are. You know who you are. Uh, <laughs> not gonna name drop, but you know. You know who you are. <laughs> um, and every day, like one day I would come to school with my hair curly and they would be like, your hair looks so ugly when it's curly. You should wear it straight. So I would beg my mom to get my hair straight. Aww. Then I would come to school with it straight the next day and they'd be like, your hair is so ugly when it's straight. You should wear it curly. What? And it's like, we're constantly being programmed and like bullied and yeah. like all these like even if it's like a subtle shade sometimes yeah. it yeah. doesn't have to be from your enemies sometimes it's from your mom sometimes it's from right. your dad it could be little from micro your, aggression yeah, yeah. yeah. your your like siblings. your hair looks better straight or yeah. like stuff like that you know where, where it's yeah. like a compliment yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, not like no that's not <laughs> that's not a compliment <laughs> those sure. underhanded compliments are like <laughs> so annoying to me because I'm just like it's it's a projection like yes, it's clearly sure. something on their front that's causing them to behave like that and like lash out at you so I just had to decide like I'm not this is not y'all are not it's not <laughs> it's not, <laughs> so, <we're> not. <laughs> so where did you grow up I grew up in Maryland okay so Potomac Maryland now okay. everybody knows about it because we got a real housewives <laughs> um but yeah, I grew up in Potomac, and I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. That's another story for another day. Okay. okay. Left there when I was five. Um, grew up in Maryland. Uh, moved to New York when I won Miss Teen USA. Gotcha. That's yeah. so Dang, cool. I mean, our mom, mm -hmm. she's from Maryland. Is she? Yeah, yeah, she? Yeah, she is. is. Where? It's outside of D.C. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. like near me. I okay. I from Bethesda, or maybe she's from Pretty Girl County. I honestly don't know, because I'm like, <laughs> she was like, I was somewhere yeah. close to D.C., and I was like, well, I know where that is, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, mention Potomac to her. She probably okay. knows Okay, it. okay cool. Yeah. I'm sure she's going to watch this. Yeah. yeah. Maryland yeah. girls are the best. Uh, <laughs> I love a Maryland girl. So oh. you, I... Okay, I listen to your podcast quite frequently, like I said. And I, I'm serious about that. <laughs> so yeah. you're Scorpio, right? Uh, of course. Okay, so <laughs> here's, the thing. here's the thing. Malia and I don't know anything about astrology. We're complete what are movies. you? We're both Virgos. So I'm like, you need so to tell stop. us, like, I, I'm Give always tea. so, like, curious <laughs> about this. I love that. And you're not twins? That's what's no. boggling me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we're a whole year and one day apart. September 7th, 02, and then September 8th, 03. Oh, seventh and the eighth? Yes, yeah. yeah. Like stop. A, a year and a day, literally. And my so mom said she didn't celebrate all your that. birthdays together? Yes and no. Like yeah. our mom still made it a separate day, but like sometimes we'd combine like birthday parties and things like that. <laughs> but she that. always made sure that it was like a separate day. So it was kind of just like a continual celebration. Celebration. Oh, yeah. Yes. I love that. That's such a Virgo <laughs> thing for you guys to do. <laughs> oh God. I'm That's like, what is Virgo that? Thing. It's such a God. Virgo thing for you guys to plan, pre-plan in heaven when you guys were going to come down. <laughs> The day after each other. I'm like, educate us. So you guys could grow up to be best friends, obviously, in this <laughs> podcast. I love Virgos. I'm a rising Virgo. Oh, so okay. I have a lot of Virgo qualities and tendencies. Hey, okay. So basically, Virgos are just that girl. Like, oh, they tell me are. more. Well, like to, me, to me, Virgos are very good at planning. They always are known as like the the organizers of the group. So like if there's a trip, it's like the Virgo is going to be the one making the Excel spreadsheet and like putting oh, things together. Okay. I don't necessarily have that Virgo quality or tendency. Neither do I, but Kent does. <laughs> I do. Kent does. I do not. <laughs> I want to have that. Me I too. want to have that. Yes. But I have the Virgo tendency of like, Virgos tend to like hyper fixate on things that other people will probably never notice or care about. Mm. But we care. So like mm. I plan all my friends, like baby showers, bachelorettes, all oh, the cute. That's like my thing. And I will be like, oh my gosh, I did not get the cake pops with the da 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 da, -da decoration. And everyone's gonna know that it's the cake ruined. Pops, <laughs> it's ruined. We should just throw out the whole entire thing. Oh I mean, why gosh. am I even planning this? I'm not even qualified to plan this. No one notices stuff like that. You're like, that. but I failed my but job. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And Vir Virgos are very like meticulous in that way. They take their time with things and they're always right. 
Virgos are always right. Mm. Even when someone says that they're wrong, even with new information, a Virgo will be like, but I'm still right because mm. da 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 da. And if you so look amazing. at it this way, <laughs> I'm, I'm the Virgo, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that though, because Virgos usually have information to back it up. So okay. some people, like Leos, sorry y'all. Leos My man's a Leo. are always loud and wrong. Virgos oh. are usually, well, I wouldn't say subtly right, because Virgos like to be very, like, <laughs> succinct about the fact that they're right. Yes. But that's what I like about Virgos, is that they they come with the information. They come with the receipts. Mm. They're always going to have a receipt. Okay. Okay. So you're like the true Virgo. Yes. Okay. I need to know the rest of your chart then. Because sometimes it's not just your sun sign <laughs> okay. that you identify with. It can be your rising, your moon, oh, your okay. Mercury. Like, this is all new information. I, I know. I'm like, I yes. Don't know. There I don't are know. other aspects of your chart okay. that will kind of dictate your personality. And that's oh. crazy that a day could like make yeah. the biggest difference. Yes. No. An, uh, an hour, a few hours can make a difference. Dang. Yeah. Your that's whole chart crazy. Can be different depending on what huh. time you were born. Because it's like where the planets were aligned in the sky at that exact moment that you came out the womb. People are always like, either they don't care about it at all, or they're like fascinated with it like I am. Yeah. I'm not like, read my horoscope every single day and like, right. let it dictate <laughs> if I'm leaving my house. Like, right. no. But there are certain things like Mercury retrograde and things like that that I'm into, or okay. like, you know, it's it's science. Like, it's right. Just, right. you know. I like, kind of like, I watch from my abilities. Compatibility with partners. I feel like that's really interesting too. That's a real thing. Don't date any Geminis. Oh, Oh, not the jaw drop. Why was why was the jaw drop? <laughs> well, I didn't want to spoil the episode. <laughs> Are you this dating like, a Gemini? Well, I was dating a Gemini. This is like this You're is so. Right? <laughs> and this there is, you okay, have I it. guess we'll and get that's, into that's the point. That's what I'm saying. I Gemini. I haven't like publicly announced this, but I was talking like on the podcast like a few episodes before that I was in a relationship. Like no details because mm -hmm. I I res want to respect my private life. Yeah, not put it too much out there about like my personal Relationship, relationships. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, we did break up is pretty fresh. Mm. So I'm like dealing with that. I'm not gonna say I'm sorry <laughs> because I hate when I, well, like when I broke up, when I had my big breakup that like I thought was gonna ruin my life, mm -hmm. everyone was like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, why? This, like, this is, is a good, this season. is good. Yeah. This is a new season of my life. Yeah. But especially if it's a Gemini, that's a good decision. <laughs> Well, it's, I obviously <laughs> love, love the man and I would like never bash him or anything because yeah. he was great. I think we were just kind of like going in separate ways. Um, yeah. But, but I, I, I say all of that. My best friend is a Gemini. Really? Okay. okay. I love her. I've heard. Also, <laughs> I could literally kill also her. Also too, isn't the like men and women are different? Like yes. if you're a Gemini man versus a, a Gemini yes. woman. Yes. They're different. Although They're I've heard different. a lot of things about like just Gemini's period. Yeah. Every toxic, time I'm like, so. oh, you're toxic. Yeah. The little you're things toxic. that I know yeah. about horoscopes and astrology, like the very little knowledge yes. I have, I've heard a lot about Gemini. <laughs> There's a lot to be said. I mean, they say a lot about Scorpios. Too. I was going to say. Really? I, was, okay. I wasn't going to say. I've if heard I a lot tell of people that I'm a Scorpio, <laughs> it's literally like the fear in their eyes. They're like, oh. Like, I'm not gonna go around you more. Sagittarius. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I'm a Sagittarius Venus. Crazy. Oh. Okay. I don't have any Gemini. It's funny. I feel like they can all be toxic though. You know? Yes. Like everyone oh, yes. has their own toxic traits. Every sign is capable of toxic. <laughs> oh. I do want to dive into the question. So I know this podcast episode is called It's Time to Let Go, Sis. So we kind of already segue into that about the breakups. Yes. Um, but we do have a question from some of our followers. One of y'all. <gasps> um, hey they asked, as a newly single woman, I'm finding it hard to embrace. How can I learn it's okay to be alone? That's a hard one because I feel like, you know, I have always been a serial monogamous. Since I mm. started dating in the eighth grade, I consistently had a boyfriend. And it wasn't like I felt like I needed a boyfriend. Right. It was just that I was meeting people that I vibed with and I was like, okay. Like they would ask me to be their girlfriend. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sure. sure. <I> <laughs> like, you know, and I think part of it is like being young and like proximity to people. And right. like, if you're, I don't know how old this person is, but if you're in like high school, you're seeing these people every single day. Like yeah. they're in your world every single day. You don't have to go out of your way to see them. Right. Um, but that was, that was like my life. I just was constantly in relationships and I was still growing though. Like mm -hmm. one of my longest relationships, actually my longest relationship was in high school. Um, and we were together for six years. Oh my wow. gosh. But we were long distance for like four and a half years because wow. we were in college and he was doing his thing. 
I was doing my thing. I was traveling the world with my friends and like yeah. enjoying my life and partying wow. and doing all the things. I'm sure he was too. I don't know what he was doing to be. <laughs> but like we were still connected with each other and like we still had a lot of love for each other and um but I I didn't feel like he kept me from living my life. Like I would literally be right. like, I'm going to go to Italy tomorrow with my friends. Just like on a spur of the moment trip, oh. and he'd be like, "Cool, have fun." And I'm like, "Great." He's thanks. like, "Hey, oh, bye." Okay, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So like, I I still felt like I was growing in those relationships. Sometimes relationships don't allow you to grow, right. and I think that's where it becomes an issue mm -hmm. if you're constantly in relationships and not figuring out who you are. Right. When I got out of my last relationship, I made an active choice I want to be single for at least a year like that was my thing because I was like is it that I'm comfortable with being by myself and I just have been meeting people that I just like and vibe with right or is it that I can't be by myself mm. like which one is it and I wanted to figure that out yeah right. so I took my time of course I ended up meeting somebody <laughs> you're like the and you're like you weren't man supposed to show me. up I was he wasn't a Gemini like, <laughs> I was like nah, he's an Aries <laughs> I love him so much he's gonna be my husband I love him so much oh, I'm obsessed congratulations with thank you okay so yeah. this is a this is a new relationship this is current. well no we've been together for a year okay yeah okay. Oh my yeah so my breakup was like two and a half years ago okay and then I think I met him at like the eight month mark or something like that so you're so almost close enough year. yeah <laughs> it was just like, oh, like why why would you come? I was just like, is this gonna like mess up my my promise to myself? My trainer, Six, who's been on the podcast several times, yep. he was like, You make promises to yourself every day. You say, Oh, I'm not gonna eat bread, and then what do you do? You eat bread. Or you say, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna work out in the morning and you don't. So like right. don't make a weird commitment, like stand so true that you end up missing out on something. A good yeah. opportunity. Especially if it's yeah. like unrealistic too, you know. It don't it didn't make any sense. It's just <laughs> it's something that I wanted to do. And honestly, I did it. I grew a lot. I was in therapy, I was doing all these things. Um, but I really enjoyed my single time. I enjoyed my single life. And I also acknowledge too that like I'm someone who thrives in a relationship. I, yeah. I enjoy being in relationships. I enjoy having a partner to share my time with. Yeah. I enjoy having <clears throat> insight from somebody. Right. And so for this person, like it's okay to acknowledge like I like being in relationships. I yeah. like dating. I like having my person. Maybe I don't like dating because one thing I realize I don't like going on dates. Mm. It's weird. Yeah. It's not my thing. Like, I'm not That's trying to That's what you said sit. about, like, monogamy, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've been with my boyfriend for two and a half, almost three years. Mm. And I feel like, I mean, we're going to get married. Like, we're we're locked in. <laughs> and I love, like, that he is my person. Yeah. And he feels the same way. And it's such, like, a genuine, authentic connection. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, I know I couldn't find that anywhere else. But I'm also yeah. not really into, like, and I never really have been into the dating scene. Yeah. yeah. And when I when I met him. It was just so natural. Yeah. Like it wasn't forced. Thing. It wasn't oh. forced at all. I like that you like him. That would be good. Imagine if she was like, yeah, he's cool. <laughs> I guess. He oh, always comes It's fun because I, I love joking around with John. So it's always lighthearted. Oh. But yeah. he's, he's a really good he's guy. He's a keeper. I love he's that. But sometimes you just, you figure that out about yourself. And right. sometimes it does take having space from someone to realize like, what do I actually care about? What do right. I actually want? Am I just obsessed with this person because I see them all the time or because they hit me up all the time because they're giving me attention? Mm -hmm. Like, I have a friend who just broke up with the guy that she was dating. And two weeks after, when well, I mean two weeks, it had been seven days. Exactly. Because I asked her, I was like, how long has this been? Because you acting a little crazy. But she, <laughs> she was like, she was like, I miss him. Like, I, I miss him a lot. And I was like, well, like, do you miss him, the person? Or do you miss the attention and the affection of like being mm. in a relationship? And she was like, no, I genuinely miss him as a person. Aww. We had so much fun. Da, da, da. So yeah. I'm like, okay, so then keep on. There's a, there's a trick to this breakup stuff. <laughs> you want them to come back. You have to be quiet. You have to disappear. No contact. Mm. It's the best. To any of y'all out there that want your man to come back. <laughs> yes. Keep it quiet, like ladies. You don't care. <laughs> Pretend like you don't care disappear for a little bit <laughs> don't be texting oh, i miss you so much i miss the way things used to be it doesn't register with them mm -hmm. it registers with us when they text us that we're like oh he misses me <laughs> they're not thinking that <laughs> so, so like, please. but if you're quiet 
and you post your little selfie and like you're living your life and you start actually enjoying that single time. Yeah. And you're genuinely working on yourself. You have some yes. time to be independent. Exactly. Get on your grind. Once you know what they you see want. that, they sense it. They have like spidey senses mm. and they can tell, like, oh, she's she's happy. Let me text her. <laughs> mm. Let me stir some yeah. shit up. Stir the- exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I feel like my downfall in relationships is I always overthink everything Mm -hmm. and sometimes I can never really okay (laughs) well that makes sense because I overthink everything and I always have but um sometimes when I'm talking to Mackenzie about it I'm like okay what's the red flag and what am I overthinking Mm -hmm. because I think if I was just by myself I wouldn't be able to like differentiate the two yeah and I would be like okay like maybe I'm overthinking this a little bit or is this like a bombastic red flag because okay mm -hmm. when she starts talking to me I'm like, let me fact check you real quick because yeah. she'll give me the scenario. She'll tell me the situation. Tell me what he said. And I'm like, no, that was a red flag. Yeah. You're not overthinking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Because sometimes it's hard to be like in between and not know. Maybe it's right. not like a big, big, big red flag, yeah. but it's a yellow flag that mm-hmm. raises those senten- yeah. sometimes, senses. Yeah. Sometimes they build on each other and they're kind of like, okay, red flag, tiny red flag, tiny yeah. red flag. But then and it then keeps it's like, going. Okay, it's what's like the big a, picture It's here? a warning. Sometimes mm-hmm. things are like a warning and, and sometimes you don't see it till it's too late. But sometimes but then, the red flags right, exactly. keep progressing and adding up over time and then it's like, okay, yeah, no, yeah. that was the warning. Exactly. Missed it. Oops. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why I always say the oh, red flags one. be looking like six flags every once in a while. It's like, yay, <laughs> let's go. And, but like, no, you got to stop. Yeah. Because <laughs> yep. and too, sometimes I won't be used to like a guy treating me a certain way and then they do it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like he's the best ever. But then mm. sometimes I'll overlook the other things. Right. And I'm like, well, yeah. he does this so well. You know, he treats me really good. And then there's, you know, smaller things where I'm like, mm, right. I don't know. I feel like the Scorpio in me is constantly, I, I love... For a man to be obsessed with me. I want you to be obsessed with me. <laughs> then I'm like, is he obsessed with me or is he love bombing me? Is he obsessed mm, with me that's, good? That's literally Malia and I. Or is he obsessed with me about to murder me? It's hard to know. Yes, it is. You don't know until it's too late and you're in a ditch. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a woman. <laughs> and you're actually dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to be careful. You, you just do. never know. And that's what Malia and I constantly talk about. Is this like a manipulation red flag mm-hmm. or is he, mm, he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you don't. You don't know. Mm-hmm. You don't know. I have a sister who's an Aquarius, and Aquarius are just like, ah, everything's great. Everything's, <laughs> so everything's amazing. And she started talking to this guy literally for one day. And she was like, he said, we're getting married. We like named our kids. We did. I'm like, do you know how crazy you sound? Repeating back how crazy he sounds. Oh. You just met. And then I don't think they're even talking anymore. I swear. Like, girl makes sense. That's what happens to Malia. <laughs> Whenever yes. she's in a relationship with somebody, they're like, your wifey after the first day, I yes. love you. And I'm like, <laughs> well, this has happened like multiple times. Like, huh? Who, what, like, where, how? Yeah. Usually what I do is I let the guy like on the first date, like talk himself up. And mm-hmm. then that's when I notice the red flags. I'm like, mm. yeah, mm-hmm. I'm taking Cause, notes. Like, Cause they'll say something and because they're saying it out loud, they don't see a problem with it. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's interesting. Like, I just like to analyze a little bit and just kind of like get to know them and they can like talk. Yeah talk themselves into a hole. It makes you wonder how many times they've said the thing. Right. Like sometimes, like guys, when I was dating, guys would say things and I'm like, you've said that before. Like you've said that That before to somebody else. Yeah, Yeah. that sounds like something you've said many times and it's worked. And that girl probably liked it. Yeah. I'm not that girl. No. (laughs) Yeah. So let me put a stop again. Let me put a stop right (laughs) there. Hold up, wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Oh my gosh. like Like a woman's intuition. Yes. I feel like, Sometimes I can never pinpoint it. I'm like, am I overthinking? Or you can't like actually confirm like mm-hmm. why you're feeling a certain way. Yeah. And that's why I always overthink about it. But I'm like, okay, my gut has never steered me wrong, mm-hmm. you know? So, and you always have to listen to that. Trust like, you your gut, do. ladies. You have to trust your intuition. Yeah. Like she, I, I call mine intuition. Everything's a she. <laughs> I'm like, I she's love that. She's I love water that. bottles, she, everything's she. I'm gonna steal that. Intuition <laughs> knows exactly what is going on every single time. And anytime I've ever steered away from her, I've paid for it. Like, mm. tremendously. So when you get that feeling in your gut, do not ignore it. You can't ignore it. Yeah. It's literally the thing that keeps us alive. Like, the reason why we're able to avoid weird scenarios or, like, when you go out at night and somebody's creepy across the street, yep, the right. reason why you cross the street is because your intuition. Like, why don't we trust that with everything else? I'm not saying you should date fearfully, but, like, some dating situations can be the difference between life and death. So mm-hmm. why yeah. not just 
be a little bit more cautious and yeah. not so trusting. You have to have your guard up. You have to have your guard yeah. up. Yeah, someone could bit. be a psychopath. Yes. I hate to say it, but like it's true. There you are just a lot. don't know. Yeah. A lot of them. You don't know. And that's the same thing with friendships too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. like oh my you could gosh. you could really trust this girl. Mm-hmm. You become besties. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. she could Two faced. Yeah. I've had that before. Yeah, we've had that oh. before. We've all had those. <laughs> another episode well, for those. another time. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, man. That's a different episode. <laughs> <laughs> I oh wanted to ask gosh. you, though um, have you ever had a scenario where you thought you were overthinking when in reality your intuition was spot on? <sighs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> relatable. <laughs> relatable. Yeah, a few things ring a bell. No, that's definitely happened to me. In relationships, it's definitely happened to me. In friendships, it's happened to me. Um, In relationships, there are things that you see in the beginning that you might think are, like, cute or, like, quirky about a person Mm. or, like, oh, he doesn't want me to wear this out because he thinks that, you know, he doesn't want guys looking at me because he just wants me all to himself. He's protective and, like, he just, you know, da-da-da-da. And like I, I dated someone once who I got dressed to go somewhere. I don't even know what I was wearing. Nothing like crazy. Not even like my worst because I could go. I could go. <laughs> if I wanted to, I could go all the way. But it wasn't even that like revealing. And we got into a huge argument before we left out to go to some party or something. Mm. Cause he was like, do you know what that's going to cause for me? Like you already draw attention. And if you are wearing that, then it's going to cause even more attention Then I have to be on guard the whole night. And then I can't even have fun. And that was in the beginning of the relationship. Oh, okay. And instead of taking that and being like, I did say something as far as like, don't try to dictate what it is that I put on. But then subconsciously throughout the relationship, I, took that into consideration Mm -hmm. and not in the way that like you want to be considerate of your partner in the way of like this makes him upset so let me not do that because I don't want him to be upset versus yeah Yeah, versus like I feel confident I feel good that's your insecurity it doesn't need to like you you're projecting on me right I didn't take it as that I I should have and then throughout the whole relationship he was insecure Mm -hmm. very And constantly trying to dim my light. Mm -hmm. And that was a situation where, like, if I would have listened in the very beginning, I could have been out. Right. And I wasn't. I don't have regrets in life because I'm not – I'm just not that person. I feel like everything is a learning experience. I I, Yeah, 100%. But then it is helpful, too, when you finally meet someone who is secure. You can be like, oh, my God. Like, it's such a breath of fresh air to be with someone who just gets it and respects you and knows that, like, you wouldn't do anything – to compromise yourself or them and like disrespect either way. Or the relationship. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've had my instances. <laughs> yeah. Another question I have for you is like, when is a good time to leave a relationship? Like, anytime. <laughs> yeah, I guess it just like depends. Any- Breakups are hard no matter how long it's been. But I think when you're in longer relationships with people listening who have been in long term relationships, you have thought about that breakup well before you've actually done it. Right. Right. And as women, we do that a lot where we like really sit with things. I think as a Scorpio with a Virgo rising, I like to really <laughs> sit with things and like imagine my life and mourn that relationship and do all those things. I like to do those things within the relationship. I'm not saying that that's mm-hmm. the right way to go, but a lot of times that's what we do. Mm-hmm. We like think about like, okay, how can I get through this scenario what will my life be like without this person like will I be okay sometimes you line up another situation right after that like there it, ooh, I, I've done ooh, that I will I won't lie but um <laughs> after my last relationship I didn't that was the first time that like I didn't have anybody on the bench I was just the like, roster was non-existent it was it was free agent I was out here <laughs> like no team <laughs> so you were like oh, wow I'm there just, was no one on the bench there was no one on the bench no, no prospects oh. nothing was just like, oh wow I'm really out here in the desert. <laughs> it's <was> crazy <laughs> and like I, I think though I had that was a five year long relationship and I had thought about that breakup two years before I actually did it mm. in my six year long relationship I had thought about that breakup I mean I should have broke that up a long time <laughs> but I think it took me like at least a year to like 
come to terms with it before I actually yeah. did it. Mm. Because when I make a decision like that, it's not, it doesn't just affect you. It affects the other person too. Right. And your families, if they're involved or whatever it might 100%. be. Friends. Yeah. So I like to know that when I made the decision to break up, I did everything that I possibly could to make that situation work, to see both sides of it, to see what I could have done better, mm -hmm. to like, you know, trying to weigh out all the options. And then you have to kind of, you have to be so confident in that decision that if the person does come back, you know in your heart that like, it's not right. It's not right. Mm. Because you can be so easily swayed. And that right. happens, that, that happens. Like you you break up and you make up and like, that's happened to me before. Right. We're like, oh, we break up for like four months and then, oh, we like, oh, we miss each other, whatever. Because I, I wasn't clear and I wasn't firm with my decision right. in, within myself. And then when I finally made the decision, I I knew I was good. Like I knew it, it hurt, but I right. knew that it was the right decision. So I think whenever you know it's the right decision, it's the right time to right. make that decision. But don't do it too early. Like don't sell your relationship short or your yourself short, I guess, to really go through those emotions and like digest everything and make a, a real firm choice. Mm -hmm. Wow. Those choices are important. Right. Like I feel like so many times we think women think that like, oh, I don't have a choice. Like I have to be with this person. We've already like spent so much time and like our families are expecting girl. This is your life. Cares? <laughs> this is yeah. your like, life. You yeah. deserve to be happy just as much as anybody else. And like right. you shouldn't compromise your happiness for anybody. Especially your, your mm -hmm. relationship. That's a big part of your life. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. your person. That's who you're spending yeah. every day with, most likely. And it's exactly. going to continue to get worse. Yeah. Like, when you already think that way and you're just like, oh, I'll just stick it out, I guess. And then you it's know? like everything they do, they breathe weird and you're like, oh. You're like, oh, I get the ache. <laughs> yeah. You're I like, oh. Not this again. Yeah. <laughs> every day you wake up next to this person or the person texts you and you like, you're like, oh, God. Like that is not... <laughs> It. That is right. not love. That is not. And honestly, too, the other person doesn't deserve to feel like that. Right. Like yeah. the feelings that you have when they come around or like they touch you and you're like, Ugh, I've been totally. there. It's totally. like that's not how the other person deserves to feel. Like you right. both deserve to be in relationships that make you feel valued and loved and appreciated. And yeah. if you don't have that in you anymore, let them go. Mm -hmm. Let it. Let it go, sis. Mm. I was like, okay. Yeah. I love it. Oh my God. That's so, so good. I, I know you kind of touched on this a little bit. Like you said, you waited eight months to mm -hmm. go into your next relationship. Yeah. Do you feel like there is a perfect time? Or I feel like it's so different from person to person, mm -hmm. but like, do you feel like there's amount of time that you need to be by yourself before you're ready for the next relationship? I talked to my therapist about this heavily mm. <laughs> um, because I... I'm surrounded by a lot of strong women. I told you I've got five sisters. Yes. My mom, my grandma, like my cousin, my aunt. And there are some women in my life who when I was like, oh, I think I might be ready to start dating. My mom especially. She's like, you're not ready. No, <laughs> you're not ready. No, <laughs> no. Like that was such a big part of your life. Like you should really just focus on you and just like be single and be like, I'm like, okay, well, it's been like, half of a year at this point. And like, I want to just put my toe in the water. Like yeah. I've never, I never dated. Like I've just never, I've never been on a dating app. I met, ended up meeting my boyfriend now on a dating app. Wow. But I had never done it. Like I had never yeah. been out in the dating world like that. And cause I either met like my boyfriends through school or like I met my ex-boyfriend at like a party. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I work constantly. So like now at this phase of my life, I'm not outside like that. Right. And if I am, I'm there for like a networking thing. I'm boom bow, get my picture and get out. Yeah. Like I'm not really <laughs> like, like I don't have time for this. No, I'm not really like looking around and seeing who's there. Like I'm I'm busy. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, when I was talking to my mom about dating, she was just like, no, it's just too soon. <laughs> just da, da, da. And then one of my sisters was like, I think you should just like focus on you and like you're so busy, blah, blah, blah. And I talked to my therapist about it and I was like, is there a timeline that like makes sense to move on? And the answer is no. Like yeah. the timeline is for you. Like if you wake up the next day after a breakup and you're like, I'm ready to date. Cool. Like as long as you are working on you the entire time and that's going back to like 
during that breakup season or like when you're about to break up with someone. Right. If you have constantly been working on yourself, why do you have to wait to to meet somebody? Like why do you have to put parameters on right. and rules? These are these are rules that you made up. Like you don't have to do that. There is no rule. Yeah, there is there's no, no rule book. book. Exactly. Like what? If there was, like you would have been with the same person your whole life. And that <laughs> that would have been it. You would have been with your third grade boyfriend. Like, yeah. But that's not <laughs> right. that's not reality. The reality is that if you're ready, do it. If you're not, Okay, if you think you're ready and you start dating and you realize that you're not, stop. Like, yeah. there's no, there's no rule. You could do whatever you want. That's. I feel like <laughs> that's true about anything in yeah. life. Yeah, everyone yes. is walking in different shoes. Mm -hmm. No two people are the same. I mean, Malia and I are so close, but we have different lives and mm -hmm. we've gone through different experiences. No one's the same. No, it's like if you're in a career or college. I wanted to be a dermatologist. I was pre med in college. Then Dang. I woke up and I said, actually, I'm going to switch to communications. I'm going to become a TV host. That's what I did. That's what you should do. If if it's not serving you and it's not hurting anyone to do it and it's not putting you in financial distress to do it, right. change your mind. You can always change your mind. Yeah. That's my favorite thing to tell everybody because I think we are so ingrained with this idea that like you have to stick on the path and you have to see it through and you have to. Right. Who said who? So who? Yep. I'm sorry. I'm a grown ass woman. Nobody tells me what to do. Yeah. I get to wake up every day and decide, do I want a caramel macchiato or do I want an iced matcha latte? That's mm. my choice. Pumpkin spice. I get baby. to yeah, pumpkin. And plus, yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, I haven't had one yet, but I'm I'm ready to have one. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. It's about that time. Yeah. No. It's like, I'm ready for ball. <laughs> but like, you can decide whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Like, it is the world is your oyster. You are living your own fantasy. Nobody tells you what to do unless you're a minor and you have parents who tell you what to do. <laughs> Other than that, like you get to make the decisions about your future and your life yeah. and who you want to spend that time with. And you get to decide if you want to spend your time with somebody else. Right. But just make sure you're not hurting anybody's feelings by doing so. Like end things properly before right. doing it. That's what I wish I would have told my young self. Like end things properly before even entertaining conversations with right. somebody else so yeah. that your conscious is clear and your karma is good <laughs> <laughs> right because that, that is respectful to the yeah. person that you're seeing yeah and especially if they have been a big part of your life i feel like i feel like in my situation i would feel like i would owe that to the person mm -hmm. you yeah. know what i mean yeah. yeah yeah how is the dating scene out here in la because mm. mackenzie and i every time we come out here the conversation is the dating scene is trash that is true. like it's absolutely but i love talking garbage. about it yeah like with everyone we meet i'm like so what's it like out here in these streets? I know, but why yeah. am I scared? Because we're probably going to move out here in a year. And I'm like, mm. um, yeah. I mean, I know a year is kind of a, a long you. time, but a short yeah. time Through at the same time. But I'm like, I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that before I moved here. And when I moved here five years ago, I was with my ex-boyfriend. Okay. And I remember my friends who are like, I have so many beautiful, talented, successful friends who were single at the time. And I was like, how are you single? Like any man would die to be with you. And they were like, girl, listen, the dating scene in LA is garbage. The men think that they're prettier than the women. They don't want to approach women. And they truly don't. Like, Got their head mm. up their booty? I have been out so many times. I cannot tell you how many times I've been hit on. Maybe I could count on one hand how many times I've been hit on by guys who live here. Mm -hmm. When the East Coast guys come to town, different story. it's a totally different party but with the <laughs> la guys they just they are so like petty i don't know what that energy is mm. they just don't feel the need it's an like, arrogance I you feel should like, approach uh, them kind of vibe like an ego thing yeah kinda. i don't know what it is it's whack <laughs> something in the water it was not <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah one of my friends actually told me she because I, like i said i moved here with my ex-boyfriend she was like Stay with him. I don't care what happens. Stay with him. There's nothing here. Oh. And I was like, well, that's kind of that Ew, you're scary. Like, that's kind of scary. But I will say, I met my current boyfriend on Raya, my first day on Raya. Dang. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. And I'm obsessed with him, and I love him. But he's not from here. Okay. okay. He's from the East Coast. I feel like a lot of people though aren't from LA. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people that I've met where everyone's kind of from all over. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah there's it's a lot like of little transplants. Melting pot. Yeah. A lot yeah. of transplants. I think. I mean, I lived in New York City for eight years, and I hear the same thing about New York guys, to New York City guys who, mm. like, transplants to New York. You have to think about it. Everybody's here and in New York to, like, do their big one. Everyone right. wants to, like, make, make, it. It, make it big, and, like, everyone's on their grind or right. doing their thing. And 
So I think for a lot of people in general, the idea of settling down is a little scary because it's like, oh, if I settle down, then I can't live in West Hollywood. I got to move to the valley and like get a house and have a dog and a white picket fence. <laughs> it's like a whole thing. And yeah. so I think you have so many people who are just trying to figure their own stuff out. Adding somebody into their life on top of that feels like a lot. Okay. So I want to give grace to that. But then mm -hmm. there's also the men who just, they want you to approach them and they're like... Mm -hmm. you, they'll literally just stare at you and like wait for you to say something. A little sassy. And I'm, yeah, exactly. It's a little sassy. I'm all for <laughs> making the first move, but like not that much, not too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I like to be pursued. Yeah. I want to know, yeah, I want to know that you want me and you're like, it's a Scorpio on me. Like, <laughs> I get that way about my man. I'm yeah. Like, mm. If you're not like that. <laughs> you're not like that about me. I'm like, oof, bye bye. bye. <laughs> what are you alive? What yeah. are we gonna do? This, this, it's not gonna work. When when you were transitioning from your previous relationship, like you said, you had like that eight month period. Mm -hmm. What was your like non negotiables? Oh, I had like, a whole list. Yeah, I was gonna say we always say that we're like, if you don't know what your boundaries and expectations yeah. are, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure because you don't know what you want in a relationship. Because then you'll settle yes. for anything yes. that comes your way. And that's exactly. that's a scary place to be in. With exactly. friends too, not just or yeah. yeah, or you'll waver. And so here's the here's the list. So <laughs> I tell everybody to make a list because it's really like a manifestation list. Mm. I, don't know I, I sound so like spiritual and witchy. I'm like zodiac. <laughs> <laughs> manifestation. <laughs> it's, it's just, it, it works. It works. So what you do, you get your notes app or if you're a journaler, get your journal. And you start writing a list of the things. This is what I, I titled it, what I want to find me in a man or what will find me in a man. Mm. Because want is different than will. Mm. You get it? Yes. Because yep. this is going to happen. And that's how you have to go into it. This is going right. to happen. The person that I'm going to meet is going to have these qualities. You have to make it BFFR. You got to be, be FFR realistic. when you're writing it down. Mm -hmm. Don't be put in, oh, he's going to have his lies and he's going to be 6'5 and he's going <laughs> to have a Lambo. Like, get your head out of your ass. Right. Write things that actually mean something to you. <laughs> so, like, he's going to be a generous man. I wrote generous because a rich man doesn't mean he's going to spend money on you. Mm -hmm. A generous man will spend his last dollar on you. A generous man will be the person when you guys are out at dinner you want a piece of what he has on his plate and he's not like, no, you didn't order it. Ew. Right. It's Ew. not always about money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not. It's, just, it's, it's not. even like generous with love exactly. and compassion. Yeah. Like that's exactly. another thing too. That's important. Those yep. things are important. Right. I, he will be chivalrous. He will, he will be a great father. He will be a provider. He will be mentally sound he will be a spiritual person mm. whatever it is like if if you're religious like he will be muslim he will be christian right. he will be all the things that he will be i put everything from like he will love dogs because i have a dog <laughs> and like that's important to me yeah uh -huh. fast forward my boyfriend doesn't love dogs but he doesn't hate them so we're good okay <laughs> um and he's not allergic so that's fine um and you write down the things that are like these are the things that when i go on dates if the person that I am sitting across from does not have one of these qualities, maybe one you can pass on if mm -hmm. it's something you can pass on. Right. If he didn't love dogs, am I going to cancel him out completely? <laughs> no. Yeah. But if he's not generous, if he's not kind, if he's homophobic, if yep. he's any of the things that are like deal oh, breakers, right? That, that's off the list. Like he's off. He's not never, it. You never want to say exactly what those are because. Mm -mm. Then they'll keep it to yourself. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. They'll pretend that they care about those things. This is your list. Mm -hmm. You don't tell them what's on They're the like, list. Oh, I love the Lord. Yeah, exactly. I'm, yeah, I'm sure you. I'm sure Sunday. you do. I'm <laughs> sure you go to church. Pull his cross day. out and be like, as a matter of fact, <laughs> like I get out of here. Okay, mm -hmm. get out of here. Meanwhile, if he like walks across the street from a church, he's about to light up on fire. God <laughs> strike him. Like that's not what you want. Yeah, that's not what you want. Because guys will tell you. Which whatever you want to hear, they will sell you a dream. They, they will sell you a dream. They just want to so, secure the bag. That's what exactly. Anyways. And you're the prize. So of course, like, why wouldn't they chase after you? Like, right. yes, of course, everyone calls you wifey because that's the reality. But she is, is he a husband? <laughs> is he a husband? Truly, 
Like, are you making him to be a husband or is he actually mm. a husband? You got to put that on the list. He yeah. will be a husband. He will be a good husband. He will be honest. Loyal. He will be loyal. Mm -hmm. He will be compassionate to my feelings. He will go and get me a box of pads if I need them mm. and not feel like he's got to have this toxic max masculinity. <laughs> right. Like, write down yeah. the things that actually count and will mean something to you. Yep. And don't waver from that because you will pay for it. You know what mm. I think about sometimes? I think about my 15-year-old sister. Mm -hmm. I'm like, my man treats me with so much respect. Like, I genuinely really love him. But, yes. like, if he were to ever say something to me, I'd be like, hey, if Michaela got into a relationship and her man said that to her, mm -hmm. how would I feel about that? Mm -hmm. How yeah. would that make me feel? Because sometimes we don't respect ourselves enough mm -hmm. and we don't value ourselves enough, but we value our friends, our siblings, mm -hmm. our parents in a different way where it's right. like, oh, if you were to say that to my sister, yeah. Mm. But if you were to say it to but me, I might you up. <laughs> yes. You need to hold yourself to high expectations yes. because you are worth it and you are valuable and you are that girl. Period. Yeah. And that's even, <laughs> I mean, the way that we talk to ourselves too. Yes. That is is in the same in the same vein. Like if you wouldn't say that to your best friend, why would you say it to yourself? Right. Like why are we trashing ourselves all the totally. time? Why are we allowing people to make us believe something that if our friend told us like, oh, my boyfriend said that I'm fat and ugly, like what like huh? you, why would you right. allow somebody to say that to you right. you wouldn't allow you wouldn't you wouldn't be cool with your best friend hearing that from their person yeah so i think we have to definitely give ourselves more grace and stand up for ourselves a little bit more and like the things that we want like i yeah. think we have this in dating in la and everywhere there's like this scarcity complex of like there's not there's not a good man out here so if you so find true. somebody who's like halfway decent you latch on to them. You're like, okay. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're compromising yourself. You're compromising your true values. And the list needs to be a list of your true values and making sure that the person that you're with is aligned with that. Mm -hmm. If you know that you are genuinely a good person, mm -hmm. there has to be somebody else out there yes. that yes. is a good person and that believes and the same morals, same yes. values. And, yes. Yeah. And that will respect you in the same way that you respect yourself yes. and that you will also respect your partner. Right. You know? And I always yeah. think to myself too, I'm like, okay, my future husband would not say that. Mm -hmm. So, and if that's the case, mm -hmm. you are not my husband. <laughs> Point blank. Point blank. And that's that on that. That's yeah. that on that. Yeah. I, it's so true. It's so true. And the the goal is not perfection. Nobody's perfect. Like, mm -hmm. Right. I like to think I'm perfect because I'm a rising Virgo. <laughs> but guess what? I'm not. Like I have my things too and I have yeah. my moments too. And what I wanted in a, what I was like, this is going to find me is somebody who can match my energy. Like somebody who is on my level, mm. not in like a, oh, you have to be on my level. And you need to be on my level in the sense of like, I need somebody who's going to be like a leader because mm. I'm a leader. I can take the leadership role. Right. And I'm 30 years old. I don't want to lead a, a man and my family for the rest of my life. I need, mm -hmm. I wanted somebody who was a leader. And somebody who can put me in my place a little bit because I have a smart mouth and I can just <laughs> go off and say whatever. So having somebody who like when I am in my little moods can differentiate between, okay, she's just like has an attitude. Like, do you need like, you want to get some ice cream or something? Like that? <laughs> or to balance you out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Or be like, Cammy. watch, watch what you, watch your tone. Like, <laughs> who are you talking to? That's, and my boyfriend would be like, wait to? a minute. Like, who are you talking to? And I'm like, oh. Nobody. Like, I needed like, that. He I didn't just, just like agree with you. The, no, yes. he. I don't. I don't need a yes man. Right. That's not for me. Like I don't. Definitely I don't need not. that. You get that. You get enough of that out on the street. Mm. Like <laughs> the man at the gas station can be your yes man. You don't need that. <laughs> you need like somebody who's gonna be honest with you. Right. And loving, loving, because you don't have to be mean to be right. honest. I've learned that. So, I think you wanna you wanna find a good balance of all the things. And even with my boyfriend, I think he's perfect for me. But is he perfect all the time? No. Are there things that he does where I'm like, oh, God, please <laughs> put the cap on the toothpaste. <laughs> please. Right. Put the toothpaste away. Yeah. Like, why is there dishes in the sink? Like, th those kinds of things. Right. Yes, those are going to come up. So, like, we can't be Delulu and think, like, oh, my God, my man is going to be so perfect. He's going to be <laughs> Prince Charming. Yeah, maybe, like, 80% of the time. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's still, it leaves some, like, room for Grace. humanness. Well, and yeah. that's right. what relationships are. It's communication. Yeah. If you are having an issue, communicate it to your partner mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You would you would want that. Like you said, yeah. no, no, yes. 
No yes men. No yes men, please. Thank and don't be so a yes girl. You. Like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I'm, and I will, my man, my man, my man, you to death. Like, I am obsessed <laughs> with him and I will talk about him like, oh, no, no, no. Thank you to my man. Yeah, thank you to my <laughs> man. Every day, I like, I literally will sing to him. He'll do anything and I'll be like, what a man, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Oh, I love that. <laughs> but and he's like, Sh please stop. Like, shut <laughs> up. Like, you're so he's cringe. Like, you're, <laughs> you're so cringe. But, but like at the same time, if he's doing something and he's screwing up, I'm gonna tell him. Like if he's wrong or something, if I don't agree with his opinion, I'm gonna tell him. Like yeah. there's nothing cool about being the cool girl all the time and you agree with every single right. damn thing. Like, Especially stop. in private. Yes. I feel like I'm a big advocate for like, if my partner does something in public, let's, let's say I'm not the biggest fan of, I'm yeah. still gonna support him and be by his side. Yes. But in yeah. private, I'm like, hey boo. Mm -hmm. that I, don't, was I don't know cool. if I'm a yeah. fan. I don't know if I liked the way you did that. Exactly. Yeah. But it's a respect thing as yes. well, you mm -hmm. know? Agreed. Well, and it shows that like you care about them too. Yes. Well, you want them to be better. And right. I think a good partner challenges you in a good way. Yes. Yeah. Not the person who's constantly trying to like bicker with you and go head to head with you because like, ew, stop. Right. But Oopsie. somebody, yeah, exactly. <laughs> somebody who can like, because my boyfriend and I, we agree on a lot of stuff. The core stuff. Mm. But then occasionally something will happen in like the pop culture world and we'll have like, we'll, it's not even, we don't fight. Like we don't fight. But we'll have like, we'll disagree on right. something. Little, little bickers. Yeah. yeah. Or we'll be like, no, like that's not it. This is it. <laughs> like, okay, that's fine. That's good. Like that's good. It's perspective. Perspective is important. Yes. Because if we all just agreed all the time, that wouldn't be that fun. And we It'd wouldn't be, be learning anything. It would be yeah. Fun. We wouldn't It'd be, be really boring. Yeah. Do we want to do the little rapid fire questions? Yes. We got oh, some over there. Yeah, they're right over there. With the... Wait, so do I hold them? You yes, hold them, girl. Yeah. Welcome to the Big Sis Energy. <laughs> oh, she's a natural. <laughs> my Cammy she's, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait, where do I start? So you can flip it to face you, that side. Yes. And then you can just kind of finish the sentence. It's going to be okay. like dot, dot, dot. I yes, these cards. Like, wow, good quality. You. CVS, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I would never date anyone who is homophobic, transphobic, xenophobic, or anything of the like. Period. Period. Ever. Yeah. Because, ew. Also, I, when it comes to like homophobia, transphobia, biphobia, all of that, yep. I just genuinely feel like you hate the girls. Like you you hate the girls. Um, first of all, you're worried about the wrong things. Like focus on yourself. Yeah. Secondly, I feel like those types of guys who like make all these homophobic jokes or like, make fun of people who are trans, make fun of people with disabilities even. Mm -hmm. They just have no compassion or like level of basic understanding of like nurturing anything. And it's not a joke either. It's not a joke. Because it's always like, oh, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. No, but not. I'm like, no. No. It's, there's, there's truth behind that. Yeah. yeah. And I think we, especially when you're young, like it's so common and like you ignore it, but like take note of that. I'm not saying yeah. that people can't change, but like, I know some grown men who will make transphobic comments or like homophobic comments and it's just like, ew, like that's so lame. And also like, why do you think that's okay to say? Yeah. yeah. Any type of you hate, know? any type of hate towards anyone, no. Yeah, because like, a lot of people are like, they're stuck in their ways sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why are you so you obsessed with that? somebody else's life? Exactly. I know, like it's this doesn't their concern life. you. Exactly. <laughs> so I feel like if you'll hate them, you could hate me. Keep right. living your life. Yeah. Keep living your life and yeah. don't judge others. Exactly. And I also, easy. I love the gays and I love a good drag show. And if you can't support me going to that, then I don't want to talk to you. Goodbye. <laughs> the, the end. <laughs> yeah, it's <just> discussion. <laughs> <You're exactly. laughs> and it's just, I care. I just, I care about things like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. People have rights. People have like, if you don't care about their rights, how are you, how am I supposed to expect you to care about my rights as a woman? Right. Bye. Biggest celebrity crush when I was younger was Justin Timberlake. Oh my God. Really? I'm so, I'm so <laughs> I, You could not tell me that I was not going to marry Justin Timberlake. Oh my gosh. I oh. used to fantasize about being with Justin Timberlake. That's in crazy. A, in an unnatural way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like posters really everywhere. Strange. I'm going to expose yes. myself real quick. <laughs> Who did you guys have? Mine's Ooh. Michael B. Jordan. Uh, oh, mine's Michael B. Jordan. I'm Always rich. and will be. I mean, it's probably everyone's. I mean, I can't I really knew like. It. <laughs> well, knew it. She knew it. I knew it. When you're oh. when you guys were younger, it would be Michael B. Jordan. Yes. yes. But for me, it was just a different. That's I mean, it's still a generational now. difference. <laughs> Who's the guy that played? I don't know why the guy who played Elvis. Austin, Austin Butler. Butler. Austin Butler. I thought he was so cute. He, I don't know. He still is cute. I mean, yeah, he still is cute. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong. I also loved. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Holes. Uh uh. 
Ugh, zero from Holes. Oh my that god, that sounds so familiar. But nobody I- listening knows what Holes is because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Holes is? She knows. She knows. She knows. Zero. zero? <laughs> oh my god, zero used to come. I literally remember when Holes came out, and I ran to the front of the theater just to like look at him up close. Mind you, <laughs> at the time I was in probably like I don't know the fifth grade, fourth grade, and I've always been a stallion. I've always been tall. Zero was like three feet tall. So like oh. it was never going to work for us in real life oh. <laughs> on the screen. Oh, You're like, he looked, looked amazing. Him. You're I like, he looked him. tall up there. <laughs> yeah. That was my crush. <laughs> the first thing I ever did without my parents' permission was get my belly button pierced. Oh. I love how I just know. Yeah. Hey. She's like off the bat. I was like, did you read these and prepare before? No. <laughs> I, I got my belly button pierced when I was 14. I took a bus to the Bronx with my friend. Oh my um, gosh. Because I was living in New York at the time. Because we had moved from Maryland to New York, then back to Maryland. Then I moved back to New York when I was okay. in the USA. I missed that part. Um, and yeah, I took the bus to the Bronx and got it done and told the guy I was 18. And wow. Got in big trouble. Did it? I, I kind of want to get one. I still have it. I love it. They're I love cute. It. I love them. So it has cute. a little like pizzazz. Yeah. It's so I cute. relate to that because I think I was 14. Oh, I remember. And I didn't go to no parlor. Uh oh. What? I have a second <laughs> piercing on my ear. Um, and I went to my friend's house. Jeez. And I was like, you guys got a little like needle, right? We put some ice on the needle. Little I'm, not style. Yes. I'm not condoning this. I'm not condoning this. But I remember I go home and I had my hair like, she oh, was being yeah, so of course. You're like, um, my, my mom like, was like, girl, what is hell? behind your ears? Like, I have an ear infection. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, immediately when we walked in the door, my mom was like, Mackenzie. Be for real. She just, she <laughs> has that intuition. They like do. my mom. Well, she's not do. stupid she, either. She's yeah. like, she always knew what we were up to. Mm-hmm. Like always. And we got in trouble for it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I, yeah. I told on myself too. My mom was like at CVS and I was like, could you pick me up some like cleaning solution? Like for like piercings, obviously. <laughs> but like, I think it was like, I don't know if it was like baking soda or hyd- hydrogen peroxide. Whatever I asked her for, she knows I wasn't. I didn't need anything like that unless I did something that I wasn't supposed right. to do. She was like, right. Girl. <laughs> and she literally was like, Cameron, because that's my legal name. Cameron, <laughs> did you get your belly button pierced? And I was like, what? 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 No. <gasps> that's what? a wild accusation. Me? <laughs> Why did you think that? Mm, I got in big trouble. My mom's <gasps> Jamaican, so like. We're really? Jamaican too. Really? Yeah, our, our grandma's, grandma's from Jamaica. Yep. Stop. Yeah. 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 We could be cousins. <laughs> we have to figure this out. We could okay. be cousins. <laughs> We could. Um, but yeah, so I, um, if you have West Indian parents, then you know they don't play around like that. So she chased after me with a metal broom. I didn't get hit because I closed the door in time. She got the reflexes. Yeah, she she can can run. Run. Exactly. Exactly. I can run. Okay, I have a stallion and I can run. Okay. I am a private person when it comes to my relationship, yeah. too. I'm very, I have not posted him. I've posted him, but only glimpses okay. like a little like angle like yes <laughs> i call him wizard kelly i don't know if you guys have seen parent uh, proud family no uh-uh. what i know guys you we have need homework. a list <laughs> we need a list of shows and movies you have homework proud I'm a family there was a character on the proud family his name is wizard kelly he like owned the basketball team or something like that and they only showed him from the chin down <gasps> oh like, you really? knew he was tall and you knew he he like had a fine voice i think shannon sharp was his voice <laughs> oh that's <laughs> and funny. like it was like you you knew who he was but you didn't and that's how Mystery. i how i post okay. my boyfriend Mystery. i like yeah. that yeah because i still i feel like i shared so much of my last relationship and now I still see articles about it and I'm like, ugh, it's so yeah. like it's scary because it's so personal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, me, yes. I don't think I posted my boyfriend till like two years in. Yeah. Like I just I feel like me and him did like a little photo shoot. Mm. And it's so cute. We went to the lake. It was the cutest thing ever. It was I'll show really you after. Cool. But it was really, really cute. And but I we never really posted yeah. like that before. Because yeah. I just was like, this is my little safe space. Yeah. This is my little then you're inviting people to like say stuff about it and you're like Too unwanted much. opinions. And yeah. I'm like, okay. Especially in the beginning too. You're like, I don't need this. Yeah. And I'm so fresh. Like, so new. Spend time with each other. Mm-hmm. Like I I they always say, like when people post like a really long post for their anniversary that you know that their relationship is like on the rocks. I saw that. Like the le- the less the better. Like yes. mm-hmm. keep it, keep it short, keep it cute, like keep it between y'all. Yeah. And like the whole world doesn't need because there were times in relationships that I had in the past where I was posting and we had just gotten to like a fight or like mm-hmm. we weren't on good terms. And it's like, okay, so who am I doing this for? You right. know? 
So I'm very protective of my totally. man, my man, my man. And I love him so much. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Aww. But y'all will see him um, when we walk down the aisle for the wedding. because, okay. And not a moment sooner. Yes. <laughs> Everyone's okay. been asking. The okay. answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> if I were to mentor someone, the first thing I would teach them is it's always okay to change your mind. Um, and cut out the naysayers. Like, I don't care who it is. I always say, I don't care if it's your grandma. If she's telling you that you can't do something and it's really what you want to do, you might have to put her on pause for a minute. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have a goal in mind and you have something that you're trying to achieve, having friends that don't believe in you, having a, a partner that doesn't believe in you, having any negativity in your sphere, you don't have time for it. Like, you have a goal. You can check in with them after you've met it. And yep. like you've done what you need to do because people will like, you'll say like, oh, I, I want to start a podcast. And people will be like, don't you think there are so many podcasts out there? Shut up. Nobody asked you. Nobody <laughs> asked you. Nobody asked yep. you. Hater. <laughs> and why are you being a hater? Yeah. Like, stop. So that's my advice. I love that. I love my rapid fire have extra things on them. <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> no, I'm like... Kind of rapid I'm, fire. I know. The story times. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> like, this is slow right. fire. <laughs> Three items I always carry with me are Aquaphor, mm. tissues, because I always have a runny nose. I don't know. The runny nose girls, you know who you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of them. Um, and... I'm like, she got her too. Oh my God. She got her too. You finally stumped me. <laughs> <laughs> we got her. <laughs> Guys, this what? was our goal. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Third one. Oh, probably Starbucks. Okay. I okay. always got Starbucks. I got one in the car right okay. now. What's the order? Okay. What's the order though? I get a grande iced matcha latte with two scoops of matcha and two mm. pumps of chai. However, it is pumpkin season. So we've switched it. We are now getting a grande iced matcha latte in a venti cup with pumpkin cream cold foam. Mm. And still yes. two scoops of matcha because sometimes they put in too much matcha and okay. I don't like that. But okay. I always have a matcha with me. I stopped drinking coffee. I don't know why. I, I want to go back. That. Me too. I'm go like, back. I'm addicted. Yes. I love coffee. See, I'm a I'm a chai girl, but I'm not a matcha girl. Oh. I don't know why I don't like matcha. Mm. I I wasn't at first. I thought it tasted like grass. I can get down. It, it kind of does. Yeah. Every once in a while. <laughs> but the right matcha, chef's kiss. Mm, yeah. One very last question for you. <gasps> What's one piece of big sis advice that you would give to your younger self? Break up with him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I was like, ooh. Just like, it's time to let Break go, up. sis. It's time to let go, sis. <laughs> I think I would have told myself sooner to stop caring about what people think because mm. it took me a minute to, like, register that mm. and realize that. I allowed a lot of other people's opinions to dictate how I felt about myself, what I wanted to do with my life, um, overthinking, like, you know, just putting putting so much pressure on myself to meet other people's expectations. Right. And the day that I realize that I make my own expectations and I can match them or I can change them and I can do whatever I want to do, everything changed for me. So I feel like you just have to stop giving a shit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. just stop. I love That's so that. True. Just stop. We give a shit way too much. And it's mm -hmm. like, why? Why? For yeah, for who? what? If it's not for you, if it's not something you genuinely care about and like you're so passionate about this thing that it has to go this way, who cares? Like you're you're not disappointing anybody. I think a right. lot of the times too, we think other people are so invested in our own lives. Yes. Everybody's like, oh, this 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 person's thinking about me. This yeah. person's thinking. Yeah. It doesn't matter for one. Yes. And and honestly, they're probably not even thinking about you. No. They're not yeah. even, you're they not even care. on their mind. No. They don't care. You know There's what I mean? a word for that. I can't remember what it is. Um, but it's like when we go out into the world every day, we think everyone's looking at me. Everyone's right. watching what I'm doing. Everyone is. And for me, I feel even more that way because I am on TV now and yeah. I get recognized every time I leave the house. So as soon as I leave the house, I'm like, everybody is looking at me. Yeah, TMZ crazy. is here. Everybody's right. going to be on page six. <laughs> and no paparazzi is checking for me. <laughs> but like in my mind and in everyone's mind, like the world revolves around you. Mm -hmm, and right. like not in a bad way or a negative way, but in a way of like, everyone's watching what I'm doing. Everyone's right. waiting to see me succeed or everyone's waiting to see me fail or whatever. Yeah. 
it's just not true. Yeah, it's no not one cares. true. It's like when we post on Instagram or something and we're like, everybody's going to be looking at this and thinking like, oh my God, she's so weird. She posted twice <laughs> today. Nobody cares, <laughs> girl. Post. Right. I can relate to that so much because I feel like growing up, especially when I was younger, I was such a people pleaser mm -hmm. and I always cared mm -hmm. way too much. And I'm like, why am I doing things to please other people? Whether it was a friend, a guy, like whatever. Yeah. I'm like, this is only harming myself. And yes. Like, People take advantage of people like that, you know? They do. A hundred percent. And it's do. like, you can still be nice, but not let people walk all over you. You can still be nice without compromising your morals and your values. Right. And like, your boundaries. And like, I've, I'm even really, I think women, we do that all the time. Like, we're always compromising our boundaries to make other people feel more comfortable. Right. But it goes back to like, following your gut and your intuition and like, trusting yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing, it doesn't make you a bitch to have an opinion or to like right. speak your mind or to contradict something that somebody else says or to, to hit unmute in the zoom meeting and say actually like I think this or I whatever like that is how you build your confidence and regardless right. of how it's received at least you tried it's better than like when you get off the zoom or when you leave the event or right. when you you know whatever whatever it is that you're doing when you stop doing that being at home in your bed, like, oh my God, I wish I would have said that. Or like, yeah. why didn't I say that? This person actually yes. did speak up and like, <laughs> they got the promotion. Like, yeah. Well, and I always say too, you can't control how people are going to take what you say, yes. but you can control what you say. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So don't worry about what people are going to, how they're going to react or what right. they're not your say. business, boo. It's not your business. Mind the business <laughs> that pays you. And like, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Dr. Seuss said, those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Oh, mic drop, mic Boom. drop. I'm like, if you're holding it, fish, red fish, blue fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yes, but it's true. Like those people who actually love you and care about you and want the best for you. Yes, they don't care. Like they're they're very happy for you and they want for you to speak up and they value what you say. Mm -hmm. And the people who don't value what you have to say, they don't really matter at the end of the day. Like my mom would always tell me, like if you don't pay my bills, you can't make me have a bad day. Like, mm. what, what are you going to do? Like, th their opinions do not matter. Right. Their opinions do not matter. What you think matters, what you want matters, your opinion matters. What you want out of this life matters. Right. So, like, go for that. Point blank. Cammie. Thank you so oh, much for being you. our first guest for Bix's yeah, Energy. Thank you so much. Aww. I'm like, what an honor. I'm so proud. I feel like I could talk to you guys all day. Oh, I love this for us. I yeah. know. I'm like, I feel like like mother-daughter vibes or yes. like sister vibes. Yes. Big sis. No, yeah. I have, I have that. like big have sister that vibes. My youngest two sisters are 16-year-old twins. Oh. So really? yeah. So I, just, so I thought you guys were twins and I was like, ah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's but crazy. You guys are still so cute. Oh, oh, thank but you. I I feel I feel honored to have this platform and like being a part of you guys' platform. I'm oh. so proud of what you're doing. Cause Thank like you. the world needs more Big Sis energy. Oh. It's a real thing. Like a lot of people don't have sisters. Yeah. It's so sad. It is sad. I don't know what I would do without my sister. No, Both my sisters. And that's why we wanted to start the podcast too. We were like, if someone else doesn't have a big sister, like we want to be that to them. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. Yes. So exactly. that's the goal. You're doing a great job. Thank, Thank you. Doing amazing. And so are you. Like relationship Thank is you. the bomb. Yeah. Thing. It's, it for, it's for the, we have some younger listeners, but I think it's for the older girls who didn't have a big sister to tell them yeah. things or, you know. Right. So you guys have to come on. We'd love to. Oh, yeah. I would love part to. two. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, my god. Part two. Well, <laughs> thank down. you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see y'all in next week's episode. Peace. Bye.